Hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about the Aqua True water filter. I'm gonna unbox it, set it up, and then I'm gonna test it, so stick around. So the AquaTrue is the first countertop reverse osmosis water purification system. If you're familiar with reverse osmosis uh, filtration systems, typically they're very large, they fit under your sink, and they require a plumber to come out and install them for you. They also take up a lot of space. Since this is a countertop solution, you'll have none of that. It's pretty easy to set up, and it's small considering what you get for it. And we're gonna take a look at all the bits and pieces now. Since this is a fairly new product, I am going to let you see what comes in the box and how it comes shipped. It's carefully packed in this uh, large box. Um, and uh, while I do that, I'm also gonna give you a little personal backstory. My wife and I are approaching our 20th year of marriage this year, and we've been living together for 24 years. Uh, during that time, we've eaten the same food, breathed the same air, drank the same water, and why is this at all relevant to this discussion? Well, uh, in the past four or five years, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and my wife has not. And so it's kind of interesting because uh, in America, they don't tell you why you have these uh, various ailments, but they're happy to prescribe medication for it. And uh, I'm a firm advocate in uh, taking responsibility of your, your body and your life, and you need to, uh, don't wait for solutions. You need to pretty much uh, find solutions yourself. So I did some Googling and I learned that, uh, you know, one of the things with regard to water, cause that's the, that's the one difference by the way, is that I drink a ton more water than my wife. I mean, I drink at least eight glasses a day. My wife, mm, she's more of a Coca-Cola drinker. And, uh, you know, she has, she'll have water. I'm not saying she doesn't drink water, but not as much as me, that's for sure. And so, yeah, looking online, the prevailing thought is that fluoride and chlorine and things like that, that are pumped in through our uh, municipal water systems uh, can be contributors to hypothyroidism, uh, specifically chlorine. Now, chlorine is what you find in your swimming pools and it helps uh, act as a disinfectant, but you try not to drink the pool water. And uh, it's used in the muni uh, in municipal water systems for the same reason to kind of you know disinfect your water as it's pumped to your house, and um, but you never take that stuff out, right? I mean, it, it's it's in the tubing and it you know it's in the water and then you drink that and uh, yeah, there you don't extract the chlorine before you drink it. Uh, same thing with the fluoride. The fluoride's good for your teeth, they say, right? In any event, um, I would like to remove that. You know, when I when I get my water out of the tap or out of my refrigerator, because I do drink uh, my water from a refrigerator, which is which has a carbon filter. So I thought I was doing the right thing. Right. But um, but it doesn't really remove all that stuff, uh, I guess I've found. So in any event that I want to remove that, that's my goal. The AquaTrue is a reverse osmosis water filter, and that is supposed to take out uh, things like fluoride and chlorine and a host of other uh, contaminants. Now, let me be clear. AquaTrue is uh, not telling me or anyone else that they're going to help you with your hypothyroidism. That's actually a personal theory I have. And, and you know, I'm not a doctor, so let's not go with what I'm saying there. I'm actually just biohacking myself. I'm curious to see if I uh, can remove the contaminants from my water with a tool like the AquaTrue, which is designed to remove contaminants like that if I can maybe, you know, wean myself off the, the Synthroid that I take for my hypothyroidism. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's a theory, I'm testing it on myself, but uh, that's my personal story on why I'm here. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're interested or curious about water filtration, uh, about reverse osmosis water filtration specifically, and you probably have your own reasons for being here. All right, I have everything out of the box now. On the left-hand side, you'll see the water filters, power supply. In the center of the screen, you have the main AquaTrue unit. And then on the right-hand side, you have the filtered water tank, which is the smaller one toward the front right of the screen. And behind that, you have the unfiltered water tank. The actual AquaTrue unit is what does all the heavy lifting. It holds all the filters and the water reservoirs. 
The unfiltered water tank is where you pour the uh, tap water into that is to be filtered. It holds a gallon's worth of water, but produces about 84 ounces of purified water. And that's a byproduct of the reverse osmosis process. It's also made of Triton plastic, which is the same plastic used in Vitamixes and is BPA and BPS free. The filtered water tank is a little bit smaller than the unfiltered water tank. And remember, we're going to lose some of the um, of the water in the purification process. But it's also uh, very sturdy, uh, same thick plastic, same BPA Triton plastic. Um, and uh, in fact, you can actually take this and remove this uh, from the uh, AquaTrue and put it in your refrigerator once the water has been uh, processed. Uh, additionally, if the BPA thing, you know, the plastic freaks you out, you can also immediately pour this into a glass container uh, if that's a concern of yours. It has a little uh, pouring spigot at the front that is a gravity feed. So when you press that button, uh, you know, depending on how much water you have in the tank is going to determine how quickly the water pours out. But generally, it's pretty fast, even when you get down to the bottom. So here are the main components, and uh, once assembled, the whole thing is going to have a height of about 14 inches, a width of 12 inches, and a depth of 14 and a half inches. So uh, it has a pretty large footprint, but still a lot smaller than what you would normally put, I guess, under your sink. Before we fire this bad boy up, we have to install the filters. There's three filters. Uh, that have four stages in them. The first stage has a mechanical filter that essentially removes the sediment like dirt and rust and sand that are in your pipes. The second stage of that filter has a reverse osmosis pre-filter and that removes things like chlorine and chloramines. The stage three filter is the actual reverse osmosis filter and that's where a high pressure pump pushes the water through a reverse osmosis membrane removing things like aluminum and arsenic, asbestos, chromium-6, copper, mercury, nitrates, lead, pesticide, and prescription drug residue. Yum. Finally, stage four has the VOC carbon filter, and that removes toxins in your water that are in gas form. It also passes through an activated coconut carbon block filter to ensure that the water tastes good. Finally, the included power supply just plugs into the back of the unit and then, of course, into a 110-volt outlet. When you're ready to rock and roll, you're going to fill up the unfiltered water tank just under the handle. You'll also want to keep in mind here that although the total height of the unit is 14 inches, if you have a cabinet above this unit, you're going to want probably a good 10 to 12 inches of clearance between it and your overhead cabinet. Otherwise, it's going to make it difficult uh, to add and remove the unfiltered water tank. Once the tank has been added, the machine will kick into gear and it'll take about 12 to 15 minutes before all your water has been processed. So right about now, you're probably looking at that unfiltered water tank and you're going, there's your problem. Well, my my actual water isn't cloudy. Um, it looks cloudy in this picture because, well, it's getting cloudy through the filtration process. As the water is pumped through the uh, filters, there's a backflow that happens and the air is released and it causes all those bubbles in the unfiltered water container. Also note on the front of the unit, when the water is being filtered, there is an animation that occurs that uh, indicates that water filtration is occurring. Once the process completes, you'll notice nice, clean, fresh water in the front and the toxic sludge, it's not really toxic sludge, but the, uh, the backwash in the back. And that's pretty much comprised of the impurities that were extracted in the purification process. That water should be disposed, not consumed, and then rinsed and refilled. Okay, so now the million dollar question. Does it work? Well, I can tell you that it tastes just like what's coming out of my tap. It tastes just like what's coming out of my refrigerator, which has a carbon filter. So to the tastes, it's pretty much indistinguishable from uh, all the other water I drink. My opinion based on taste alone is a pretty useless metric, so I picked up a water tester. And a water tester is essentially a conductivity meter. Pure clean water has a conductivity of zero, essentially. And as you add impurities like salts, metals, and minerals, your conductivity will go up. 
So if you look in the top right corner of the LCD, you'll see it says zero. There's a temperature below that. We're really concerned with the uh, top right number. And uh, I've never tested my water before, so I have no idea what to expect here. But as you can see right now, it's at 105. Uh, and that's uh, my pure tap water, just fresh out of the sink. Um, so I was pretty impressed to see that uh, what's coming out of my tap is, uh, you know, as high as it is. I mean, it's actually not bad, but it's not zero. Now, your mileage may vary depending on your municipality and how they uh, treat your water. So referring to our handy chart that's on the back of this water tester, you'll see that I'm in the 105 range, which is that dark blue in the top row on the right. So I have what's considered hard water. I'm at the low end of the hard water. Now, technically that's not bad, but for my personal biohacking test, I'd like to see if I can get that closer to zero. Now, just as a note between tests, I follow the manufacturer's instructions for this tester and I clean off the, uh, the probes with alcohol and then I um, wash it out in distilled water, which uh, in theory is supposed to have, uh, is supposed to be pure water. Now, I'm not going to show this step every time, but I just wanted to make a point that I did make an effort to avoid any cross-contamination. All right, next up is my filtered water test. Now, this is the water I drink all the time. It's uh, from my refrigerator. It's the same as my tap water. However, it goes through a carbon filter. It's a GE carbon filter that's uh, built into my refrigerator. And so I imagine uh, this is good for me, right? I mean, it's filtering my water, and I've been drinking this for years. Um, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing here. Of course, I've never measured my water before because who does that? But uh, yeah, the results here are kind of uh, astonishing because as you see, it's 104, 105. It's, it's pretty much the same as my tap water. Um, what the beep? What's going on here, people? Yeah, I really didn't expect those results. Uh, essentially, my filter's useless. In all fairness, I believe my filter is at about 80%. So it would be interesting to see uh, what type of filtration I can get with a brand spanking new filter. But uh, anyway, it's kind of weird because, you know, it's still telling me it's it's good. It's not. Uh, it does not require a replacement. However, it's not doing anything. So it makes you go, hmm. So as you can see, nothing's changed. I'm still in the hard water range. The 105 value puts me in that uh, the low end of the blue area. Let's see if the Aqua True does any better. All right, I'm all zeroed out and I'm ready to perform my test and I'm not having a lot of confidence at this point. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna see the results for the first time uh, as you do, um, as I do this. I mean, I've actually seen the results, but while, you know, this is actually my my first time stirring it up in the in the aqua true water and bam 10 so uh yeah that tells us that the aqua true is doing something and a significant something because it's reduced the total dissolved solids down by like 90 percent referring to our tds chart we can see that a 10 puts us all the way on the top left uh, you know, close to zero almost. You know, 10 is pretty good. It says ideal drinking water, reverse osmosis, uh, distillation, etc. So yeah, I think we can safely say that the Aqua True reduces the total dissolved solids in water. Now, my kitchen science isn't going to tell us exactly what solids are removed, and this might not be the be-all, end-all of tests, but at least it's one metric we can use to see that the machine is doing something, right? All right, so I paid for this water tester. I might as well use it some more. So I've added another cup, and uh, this time we're gonna put some bottled water. Here I have some Deer Park bottled water that I bought from the store. It's also uh, treated through a reverse osmosis process, so it's comparable to what the AquaTrue should be doing. And uh, let's see what we get when we test this water. One point I'd like to mention is that the AquaTrue is designed for municipal drinking water as your source. Uh, if you are on well water, uh, AquaTrue doesn't recommend you use this unit. I believe it can remove biological pathogens, but they don't recommend it, so keep that in mind. All right, surprise, surprise. Deer Park, that's uh, good spring water, is, I guess, good. It's 58, which is good, but the AquaTrue's better coming in at 10, so... Hmm. Well now, isn't that special?
Sorry, I'm starting to lose it. Too much testing. Anyway, why not? Let's check out our distilled water. A little sanity check here. Uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, water tester is supposed to become uh, factory calibrated, and uh, I'm trusting that it is. And uh, I did buy some calibration strips for it, but I didn't want to mess with it. We're going to use our distilled water as a calibration. Uh, we expect to see a zero here in the distilled water. And uh, sure enough, yeah, the distilled water is zero. Totally clean, totally pure, delicious H2O. If I would have gotten some other value, I would have been worried that either the water was contaminated or the device wasn't calibrated. But the fact that I did get a zero, it's kind of what I expected. Kind of feel good about things. All right, quick final recap. So uh, here we're looking at our cups that we tested of the total dissolved solids. Tap water on the left coming in at 105. Filtering that through my GE filter. Didn't do a thing, 105. Then I uh, used AquaTrue, all right, so I have same tap water filtered through the AquaTrue, and that gave me a TDS of 10, and then comparing it to the Deer Park drinking water, it's uh, that comes in at 58. Remember, the lower the number, the better. I'm not showing the distilled water here. That came in at a zero, which is at, uh, what we would expect. Um, so yeah, the closer you get to zero, the better. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. I'm going to leave a link to the AquaTrue water filter and to this water tester in the description below. If you have questions or comments, leave them below as well. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up before you leave, and I'll see you next time.